This is Joseph Riegler. This is the only picture I've ever found of him. Tell me this guy doesn't remind you of your grandpa or that uncle with the infectious laugh. This guy was a hero, an absolute badass. Now, I'm not calling him a hero because he saved 20 kids from drowning or he found the cure for a previously incurable disease. Not all heroes wear capes, or lab coats for that matter. Some people are heroes just because of who they are at their core, which, in some, leads them to always do what's right, even with the odds stacked against you. In 1988, at the age of 67, Joe was a local Portland barfly, but not in the way you'd think. He was known and beloved at just about any dive bar you could find on the east side of Portland. It wasn't because he could pound him. It wasn't because he told great drunk stories. Oddly enough, he didn't drink much. He was known for stopping by and only having a drink or two. It was the company and the conversation that he loved. He was affectionately known in these local bars as Old Joe. One of the places he loved to frequent was the Cracker Box Tavern. This is the only Cracker Box Tavern I've been able to find in Portland, and I hope it's the same spot. I mean, how do you better own the image of a dive bar? There's a welcoming hand missing a portion of its index finger. And is that a no drugs allowed sign posted outside? Dive bars in Portland were a dime a dozen back in the 80s, and right there was old Joe, enjoying his later years, not in the best way he could, but in the best way that he wanted. This is Patrick Kelly. Patrick Kelly is not a hero, not even an anti-hero. He's just a scrub. In 1980, he started his criminal career with a bang and a botched robbery of a restaurant in Northeast Portland. I did another video about that crime. Even in prison, this guy couldn't stay out of trouble, and despite a 34-year sentence, he was back on the streets by 1988, clearly having not learned his lesson about the consequences of crime, robberies specifically. This guy was just a real scumbag. Local police began staking out Patrick Kelly's home in northwest Portland at around 11 p.m. They followed him as he drove away with a friend. When he stopped to let the friend out to use a phone booth, the police swarmed. Kelly panicked and rammed a surveillance vehicle, leading an officer to blow his tires out with a shotgun blast. A struggle ensued before Kelly was finally taken into custody. So why were the police staking out Patrick Kelly? Well, they'd been tipped off by an unnamed informant as to his possible involvement in a string of robberies the night before, September 27th, and worse. With a strong criminal record to his past, pointing the finger at Kelly for such a thing was not far-fetched. It would turn out he was the one responsible for the events of September 27th. But after pleading no contest in 1989, Kelly was sentenced to 165 years in prison. How did he get such a long sentence after pleading down? It was the early evening of September 27th. Patrick Kelly was on the prowl and showed up at, of all places, the Cracker Box. Yep, that Cracker Box. Who else was there? Old Joe. Kelly stormed the place, intent on robbing it. While everyone else stepped aside, Joe stepped forward, attempting to stop the armed assailant. For all his efforts, Kelly pistol whipped him before escaping with some loot. Old Joe had done his best, standing up to a criminal with a loaded gun when nobody else would. His prize, a trip to the hospital. His wounds were assessed, and he was released shortly after. After a rough day, 
resulting in a trip to the emergency room, what better way could old Joe finish off his day than hitting up one of his favorite dives? He ventured over to The Table in Northeast Portland. I, to this day, have not been able to ascertain exactly where this dive bar was located, but what we do know is old Joe was there, doing his best to finish off his day on a high note. And then, a man enters, wearing a ski mask, a second bar, and a second robbery. Not only that, but the man behind the mask was Patrick Kelly. By absolute chance, during his robbery spree, Kelly just happened to pick two bars that Joe Riegler had visited, and wow, he was there. And this all happened over the course of just a couple hours. In a bizarre act of either carelessness or ignorance, Kelly did not hold the bartender up and wait for the case, but rather walked in, pulled out a knife, cut the cord on the cash register, and proceeded to walk out of the place, register in hand. Old Joe was having none of this. Again, these dive bars were like another home to him, and Patrick Kelly had violated the sanctity of that home. Patrick Kelly was a violent criminal. Patrick Kelly was a jerk-off. And Joe was fed up. As friends tried to stop him, Riegler fended them off and stepped out onto the street to once again try and put this thief in his place. As he approached Kelly to quell his escape, Kelly pulled his gun again, only this time he opened fire. Moments later, old Joe Riegler was dead, dead through the most bizarre and unlikely set of circumstances. But in talking on the deepest of tragedies, the very loss of one's life, all of that strangeness takes a back door to how things ended. Again, not all heroes wear capes. Some of them just greet you with a beer and good conversation. Old Joe was pushing 70, facing off against a younger, healthier man carrying a firearm. But it never stopped him from trying to do what was right, even in the face of potential death. The loss of life is always a calamity, but Old Joe faced it fearlessly. Not just for himself, but for his bar friends, who were family to him. Who of us would honestly walk into a possible bullet, just to stand on principle, and face those powerful moments wherein we have to ask ourselves, what would we have done? Most of us, myself included, would have let the guy get away. In the same vein, one may see old Joe's actions as foolish and reckless. But you know what? It was his life, not yours, not mine, not ours, just his, and he was a total badass. Old Joe, this video's for you.